When using room persistence library to keep your users data locally, it is important to verify the reliability of the database and make sure the user's data remains stable. With room testing, you can make sure that the database behavior remains reliable when running different queries on your data. The reasons why we do want to test room is because to make sure the queries are performing correct it can be either queries defined in DAOs or the migrations. At this stage, we only test the DAOs. Some people might tell that our DAOs are simple and might not make much sense to test them because we are basically testing room's internal functionality. Well, that is correct. We are using room's default annotations for our DAO methods. But if we had custom SQL queries using query annotation, then we wanted to make sure if those queries are behaving correctly and producing the same results. Well, the process of testing remains the same for both cases. Therefore, we will just test our current simple DAOs because the goal is to see how the testing for room works. Based on the official docs, it's recommended to run your room test as Android instrumented tests. It is also possible to test locally, but sometimes the version of SQLite running on your device and your user's device might not match the version on your host machine. Therefore, it is not recommended. Because of that, we will also stick with instrumented tests for our database tests. But keep in mind that these tests are still unit tests that run on an Android device instead of running locally on your computer. That means it is required to either have an emulator or real device connected. However, since they do not require an activity to run, they are much faster than instrumented UI Android tests. There is also a GitHub repository in the description with the complete code for this project. Just in case something goes wrong, both beginning and the complete states are available in the separate branches. In this video, I start with the beginning state and if you like to have the same state as mine, clone the project and switch to that branch. Once you have cloned that project, go ahead and open it in Android Studio. And let's quickly run it on the emulator once to make sure everything is working right now. Open Note DAO. We just want to keep it there for now, but this is what we want to test. Let's go have a look at official docs to see how to test our room database. We already discussed the different ways of testing it. Let's have a look at the example of the official docs. So as you can see here, for our test, we have to create an in-memory database using the test context and then access the user DAO the same way we used to. Let's go back to our project. Let's go to the Android test package and here we're going to create a new package the same way as our data package let's just call it data inside that we will create a new kotlin file and let's call it notdao android test create our test class inside that we're going to define our system under test which is the notdao We'll call this object SUT, which stands for system under test. And then you'll create another variable, let's call it MDB, to hold the in memory database object. And we use room.in memory database builder method for that. To build the in memory database, we need to provide a context object and tell the method which database to create which is app database in our case. We also want to allow main thread queries and build it. Let's have a quick look at the documentation. So 
So the documentation is creating the in-memory database inside the before method, a method which is annotated with before and runs every time before a test is going to start. We can also do the same. So this way we make sure that our in-memory database is created before each of our tests. So let's create a new method. We will call this one create database and also another method after this one runs after each test. We will call this one cleanup because we just want to make sure our environment is cleaned up before another test wants to execute. Now let's move this line inside our before method. We are going to define it as a latent var like SUT. We define the type as app database. And after that, we are going to set the value of SUT to mdb.notdal. Finally, inside cleanup, we will close the database. Now we are ready to write our first test. Let's split the notdal, the right side of the ID, so we can see the methods that we are going to test on the left side. Now we'll create our first test function. First we have to annotate it with test and we will call this function test insert note and read in list. We want to make sure the note that we inserted inside the database will be returned correctly. And since we are using coroutines, we want to block the current thread until its completion. That's why we will use run blocking. Most of the time, the tests have three steps, arrange, act, and assert. So we're going to add comments for those three steps. Now for arrange, we need to create a fake text and use that fake text to create a new fake note entity object. In the act, we only want to insert the fake note object and then try to read it again. Since the return value is flow, we'll call the object that's coming back from the database as note list flow. And then we will use our flow to read that. There is one tiny catch here. The flows need to be collected to access the emitted object inside it. Even though it is possible to collect the flow in tests and block the execution until a value is emitted, there is a simpler way. Let's have a quick look at the flow testing documentation to find out. As you can see here, we can use the first method on the flow object to access the first emitted object, which in our case is the first emitted list of nodes. Let's simply use that. And now, since the return object is not a flow anymore, let's remove the flow from its name. Now, ideally, we want to assert that the text of the node returned from the database is equal to the fake text which we inserted earlier. However, asserting it the nice way we just wrote is not supported out of the box. To do that, we need to add Google Truth library which allows writing fluent assertions like this. Let's go ahead and add the dependency to our project's module level build.gradle file. This will be an Android test implementation. And let's define the version inside our project level build.gradle file. Let's sync the project and wait for it to finish. Everything looks fine. Let's close the build.gradle file and go back to our test file. Seems like there is an error with assert that. Even though we added the Google Truth library, this might not be an issue for you, but to fix it, let's have a quick look at our imports to make sure the correct dependency is added. There it is. Simply remove the wrong dependency and clean the imports. Now press Option and Return or Control and Return on Windows to add the Google Truth dependency. Now that everything is cleared, click on the green play button next to the function name to run the test. 
Perfect! Our first test passed successfully and everything is green. The second test will also be very similar to the first test. So let's just copy and paste the first test and call it test update node and read it in list. In our arranger step, we will also need a second text to update the first one with. Let's call this one fake text updated. In our actor step, after a successful return of the note object from database, we will add a new line and use Kotlin's copy method to update the same note object from DB and only change its text to the updated one. After that, we will again read the updated note from the database. In a third step, we assert that the text of the updated node from the database is equal to the new text. Now run the second test by clicking on the green button and choosing run. Great, the second test is also passed. The third test would also be a bit similar to the second test. Therefore, we will simply copy and paste the second one. Let's call this one test delete note removes note from list. All right, we won't need this line. Here, after successful insert, we simply want to remove that object and again, read the list of nodes from the database. And finally, we want to assert that the node object does not exist in the database. In other words, it's empty. Now run the third test by clicking on the green button and choosing run. It's passed, well done. Let's quickly run them all together. All green, that's amazing. You did a great job following along to this point. We tested our room database to make sure it behaves as expected. We also use Google Truth library for simpler and fluent assertions in our test. Don't forget to give yourself a pat on the back for your achievement. If something went wrong while following along with the video, make sure to check out the GitHub repository for the working project. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions, I usually try to answer every day. And last but not least, for future content, make sure to like and subscribe. Your likes will motivate me to make more videos like this and also if you have any feedbacks or requests for future videos, please let me know in the comment. Hope to see you next time. Bye!